Oops, uh, sorry. Uh, hi, uh, and uh, welcome to the early late night live show, everyone. Uh, I want to uh, say a, uh, that you know, what we do and say on this show, we, we try to be as accurate, uh, as relevant, and, uh, and uh, uh, timely as we possibly can in everything that we say and do. Most of the time, but so. But anyway, uh, okay. Well, listen, look. The reason that I'm on camera right now is because, uh, and I'm going to apologize in advance for this veritable tirade. But I made a commitment to Terry that I would prove that I do have things that I don't like, and that didn't ask for this. I sometimes can be a curmudgeon of sorts about things, uh, and not just the Pollyanna. So, all right. So here goes. Okay. There are a few things that I loathe more. The few things that, all right, you know what? There are few things. <laughs> there are very few things that I loathe more than an incorrectly or just plain poorly used idiom or euphemism. Call me a stickler or perfectionist or whatever else you want to call me. That's fine. But one of the most butchered phrases that I see is the proof is in the pudding. No. No, it's not, okay? <laughs> no one ever hides facts in a pudding. That's just firstly impractical and simply gross. Nobody goes digging through pudding looking for proof. <laughs> All right, so the correct saying is the proof of the pudding is in the eating, which essentially means that you have to experience something in order to know what it's like. You have to try it. You can't just look. I mean, you can't just see the proof that you're looking for by looking at it. Okay, so... All right, next is one fell swoop. Okay, so what you're saying is that you mean you swooped in like a hawk and killed all the things that you just casually <laughs> referred to. Okay, well, that's how Macduff used it in Shakespeare's Macbeth when describing how a family had been killed, which I know it's dark and sad, but it's true, and seemingly somehow got lost in today's usage. So next time you say you completed tasks in one fell swoop, just know that you just murdered them, <laughs> which is wrong. Okay, so I can forgive you all for this one, since, frankly, I've been using it wrong for most of my life until I became whatever it is that you called me or will call me at the end of this rant. But I looked things up, you know, eventually, and this one is, you've got another thing coming. Well, the word thing should be think, although it does make some sense in the bastardized form, the the whole correct phrase is, if you think that way, then you've got another think coming. So if you used it in a way to mean that they need to think that one over some more, then you're good. Otherwise, you have another think coming. I'm so confused. Okay, end rant. <laughs> <coughs> How'd I do? Not badly. Not bad? Yeah. Wow. I was expecting something completely different, in which case I would have told you to go out and play in traffic. Well, I know you actually take more time wow. to write your model. You say play in traffic. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't need to look that one up. <laughs> Anyways, we've got a, a great show for you tonight. Our guest author, Kara Kamo. Is that how you pronounce your first name? Is that awesome? Good job. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to trash or not some new trailers. We've got the teaser for uh, Stranger Things 4, as well as the, uh, the Green King. And Knight. Oh, the Green Knight. Yeah. Uh, it's typed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we reveal the new Baby Yoda, a.k.a. the child, bobblehead from Pop. And uh, we fill in between some with fun videos and various other nonsense that you don't want to miss. So don't go away. Stay with us, and maybe we'll see some beautiful credit footage. <laughs> Wednesday night from 7 to 8 
on Exeter Channel 98 and on our YouTube channel, the Early Late Night Live Show YouTube channel. Please make sure to like, subscribe, hit the little notification bell, and share with your friends and enemies and anyone else you can find on the streets because we need friends, according to Arnie. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I need friends at all. We I'm perfectly friends. happy, yes. <laughs> We got each other. Uh, oh, God, I can't even finish this sentence. Never mind. All right. See, sometimes I'm right. So um, even though even though um, I moved this to the beginning of the show, much to a lot of people's chagrin, I think it's the right phrase. Yeah, chagrin. this is the right phrase. Yes. Oh, wow. I'm pretty impressed with myself to, to be able to use that, that phrase. I'm, I'm literally sitting with a bunch of writers here, and I use the phrase properly. I'm, I'm, I was very intimidated to say that phrase. Some people have told me that they don't like it, but, you know, that's just members of the crew, so what do I care? So, <laughs> some people have told me that other people have told me that they don't like it. So, if you want the trailer trash moved to another section of the show, just let us know. By and large, we're here to please. Most of the time, we're not, though. All right, Arnie. Sometimes we're just here to beef. <laughs> that, that's true, yes. Yeah. <laughs> what do we got for the first show? All right, show? the first trailer is first the trailer. Green Knight. The Green Knight. Yeah, not to be confused with the Green Giant. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Or the Green King. Or the Green King. <laughs> All right. So this uh, this movie comes out May 29th in the United States. Uh, it stars Dev Patel, Alicia Vikander. Why are you saying the United States? Because uh, that's what it says here. And I just read exactly what. <laughs> you missed like, the word. Like me, who's trying to. I said United <laughs> States correctly. <laughs> Anyway, it also has Joel Edgerton. What is with you this year? You I keep know. saying, like, you know, April 2020. We know what year it I is. I didn't say 2020. <laughs> no, but you were saying that, from like, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> I, I was actually going to make fun of you last week because you didn't say <laughs> yeah. 2020. All right, so it's coming out May 29th, 2020, here in the U.S. Why are you saying 2020? We <laughs> know. It's a fantasy retelling of the medieval story of Sir... Of, of a knight and a queen. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I'm not sure. going to say his name, Gwen? but I'm sure... Thank you. Can you repeat what he said? Is it what is it? Gawain. Gawain. Yeah. Gawain. Uh, I was gonna say Gawain, but that's it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not. Um, so the Green Knight is based on a bunch of uh, on, uh, King Arthur poems. Okay. Um, there's three different stories with him in it, but uh, in two of the poems, uh, the Green Knight's name is Redfeather, which I just think is the funniest thing ever. Like Redfeather. I am Lord Breadbettle. <laughs> oh, really? Yes, that's right. <laughs> awful funny. Yes. <laughs> I'm Lord Breadwetter. <laughs> <laughs> How? So when the baby was born, okay? Yeah. All right. When this, when this baby was born, and they, they, they hold up, they said, what are you going to name this baby? You know? Well, in the poems, I should point out that not only does he have green hair, but he has green skin. It's green skin, yeah. Yeah, in Oh, so you guys actually know what this thing is I about. just looked it up now. Oh, okay. Apparently, when his head got chopped off, he picked it up, put it back on, and said, I'll see you next year. <laughs> okay. I guess he can get away with the yeah. bed little... There's a lot of story behind it. <laughs> yeah. I'll get into a little bit of it. They only call him bread bed over once. <laughs> yeah. you know, can you bring that up again real quick? Yeah. Um, I, it'll well, give me a second. So you, you know more about this, I think, than most... Obviously, well, I, did, well, right, I, yeah. I had to do some research to kind of refresh my memory, but I love King Arthur. So right. the, that whole Knights of the Round Table and all that... Is very intriguing to me and uh, uh, the time period and whatnot. So, in uh, in refreshing my memory about this particular character, I uh, was reminded that he uh, was essentially created. That the character was the guy was created in order to go and test the Knights of the Round Table. Oh, okay. So uh, that his uh, one of his tasks was he went to Gawain, who uh, to say, "Hey, look, strike me with your sword." And then one year later, I will repay you, or I will get to do it again, or, have, or do it back at you. Um, and I forget exactly why, why he had done that, but or uh, why he had chosen that method to test him in particular. But Gwen chopped his head off, and then he picks his head up and puts it back on, and says, "I'll see you in a year." Um, and uh, but then, then Gawain was like, "Good for the entire year." He's like a model citizen until he meets somebody else's wife and ends up falling for her and stepping crossing the line. In which case, then he becomes kind of falls from <laughs> falls from grace, as it were. 
Don't ever so. say that again on the show. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a woman behind all of this? You filthy little dirty woman. You, why did you say that? I just said Hopefully you didn't say that. Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> you went dirty. <laughs> and this is a kid's show. <laughs> it's not Ben Whittle? Is that what you're talking about? No, Fred oh, God. <laughs> yeah, see? Fred Whittle. Yeah. I was. I, I remember seeing it earlier, and I thought yeah. my son was all lowercase, but it's not. But in, in one of the stories, he's only wearing green. He's not actually green skin. But I think it's funnier if he's green skin. But anyway, this is about the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually about the trailer, which I just think looks like like somebody in the '60s took like way too much like LSD or something like that. But right. it's actually made now, so I was very confused by this trailer. I don't know if they make LSD now. <laughs> I don't know. That's why it's in the '60s. <laughs> drug I heard somewhere in a movie. <laughs> from LSD in the 60s? Or I, don't know what, I, don't know. I don't know what, I don't know what they were doing in the 60s. Everything. Huh? All right. Yeah. Yeah, the, knows. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so I brought this to your attention because I wanted to talk about the trailer. <laughs> oh, right. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, I'm going gonna, gonna to ask Mitch to go first because you actually know this stuff and you just read it in like a clip note like Arnie did and paid no attention to it like <laughs> I did. <laughs> feel much better off at this point, but uh, watching the trailer, I was, uh, I, at first I just kind of took it in originally, and I'm like, oh, this looks kind of interesting, I like the time period, and, and it might be interesting to kind of watch and see, is it a series or movie, I forget, it's I a movie. Know, it is, okay, um, so it, it might be something that I would definitely go and seek out to see if I can find in one of my already paid platforms, but yeah. um, I noticed that they have the woman in there who was actually behind the creation of the green, uh, uh, the green man, I don't know if there's an association with the green knight, but um, who's like, supposedly controlling this guy? So it looks like it's got the elements right. from the story that might make it kind of, you know, ties everything in together. I'm not sure all the details, but uh, I, I, just, I do like the genre. So. All right, all right, cool, cool, cool. Uh, Kara, Kara, come on. Well, so I s just recently saw the trailer for it, and I first thought, like, well, this is kind of cool. This is uh, kind of new to my genre that I like. I like that fantasy vibe. I like how that was going on, mm -hmm. but.
you know, after kind of thinking about it, um, solid thumbs up for the story and the, and the subject matter. And uh, I'm another solid thumbs up just because it looked amazing and there was some pretty cool stuff that I forgot about, like the monster. Yeah. Uh, which is, I'm not sure where he comes from. So I'm really interested to know what, more about what's going on in this. Right. Already? Uh, two, two thumbs up. Right. I do like the fact that Mitch is talking about the old history and stuff like that. And Terry, what do you think about it? There was a monster in it. <laughs> <laughs> you see the monster? It was like, really cool. I forgot about it. And I'm not excited anymore. <laughs> Mitch is like, it's all, th- oh, and there's, there's a, a monster. monster. <laughs> That's what the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, one solid thumb up for the monster and all the other things that I said. Uh, one other thumb um, in the middle, but because I, I don't know enough about this story-wise that it could just be just a, an LSD trip or film from like drugs. Yeah, from the 1960s. <laughs> you laugh, but you didn't watch the trippy movies that I watched. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to move on now. Arnie, what's the next right. trailer? The next trailer is uh, for season four of Stranger Things. It's actually just TV. Hannah was asking me, you playing a teaser trailer? Just a teaser trailer? Like, we've done that before, too. Yeah. Have you? I'm like, I actually don't know if we've ever done teaser trailer yeah, before. <laughs> yeah, we've done teaser trailer. Okay. But this is Stranger yeah. Things Season 4. <laughs> and so we're, you and I switch places because you actually know about that. <laughs> <and I know. laughs> so Hannah said, I went over to visit her at a house. My girlfriend, a big fan, she got me into Stranger Things. And she said, sit down. You have to watch this. Don't look at the title. I saw Stranger Things 4. I said, okay. All right. And, she, and I'm like, this can't be. This can't be. Is this really? Is this really? Is this? Oh, ah, ah. Oh my God, Jim Hopper is alive. Yes! <laughs> He's not dead. That I don't have to watch the, the whole series. I was wondering about it. I'm like, the guy takes his hat off, turns around, it looks epic, but I'm like, it's a bomb, dude. <laughs> right. Jim Hopper. On the railroad. He, 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 at the end of the series, he, he, he thought he died. Ah, but okay. in the end, they're in like a Russian, spoiler alert, <laughs> if you haven't seen it, they're in like this Russian prison camp. And you hear the Russians talk about, should we should we do anything with the Americans? But you don't know who's in the, in the jail cell. Ah, okay. And it's Jim Hopper. And I was like, I don't want to watch the series anymore if Jim Hopper's dead. That was just enough. I just was, I was not going to watch the series anymore. If that was the case, I couldn't. Uh, he was my favorite character, and I just couldn't deal with it. And so when I saw this trailer, I literally, like, ah! It was, like, very <laughs> got my show back. Yes. Okay. All right. Um... <clears throat> Stranger Things, uh, I don't know, maybe about a month or so ago, but then I got distracted by other stuff going on in my life, so I kind of stopped watching it. But when I saw this teaser trailer, I was just staring, I was like so glued to it, and I'm like, I didn't even know anything that was going on, but I'm like, I've got to go back and watch it. I'm like, I did something. Like, I've got to go back and watch because I miss it completely. All right, so <laughs> this trailer has definitely got you enticed to watch for us. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Now, uh, Mitch Fortier, uh, the other Stranger Things of this host group right here, Fans. So you call me a stranger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the other, the other strange thing. The other strange thing. We mean you're the yeah, only no, one. No, absolutely. I right. love the series. I right. Mean, like I've actually seen the first two seasons twice mm-hmm. because I introduced it to somebody. I'm like, I don't want to watch the first two seasons. Yeah, yeah great. Cool. Yeah, all good. Um, so when the when it came up, I, I, of course I had this no expectations, but I forgot about the Russian camp. Right. At the end of the, the so I wasn't sure what to expect, and then. Uh, I was kind of watching this, and I'm like, oh, they're you know they're missing the pegs. They're really terrible railroad. I was thinking <laughs> that too. I was thinking that extra <laughs> right there is playing that hammer like very heavy, like right? <laughs> and I'm like, that guy up there with the gun. I mean, he looks a little awkward. So, <laughs> <laughs> and then Jim Hopper pops up, and I'm like, holy crap, is this a flashback, or is it, am I forgetting something? But I thought he was supposed to be dead. So, yeah. So uh, big reveal, really cool. Uh, I may, I, now I want to go back and watch season four again. All right. Three, three. Yeah. Arnie. Okay, so there's actually a tie between these two trailers. All right. And, and one is that I'm I was watching newsroom while you guys were watching all cool stuff. And, <laughs> <laughs> the time. and uh, the Jim Hopper plays in newsroom, and so does the the main knight in. Oh, okay. Newsroom. All right. So they're all right. both okay. from newsroom. So seeing him turn around looking like a tough guy because he's just a news anchor. <laughs> I was like, whoa, the dude's been working now. <laughs> um, I like the atmosphere of it. Um, I didn't really get the reveal, so I knew it was obviously it's just a teaser for fans, not right. a teaser to bring in. But anytime you bring in Russians and Siberian prisons, I'm like, ooh. 
<laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> hey, fellas, if you're looking to uh, <laughs> find a single right now, our email address is in the link below. If you really want to get her attention right now, start talking about the gulag. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do a good so rating. <laughs> Two massive thumbs up. Yes, yes. And then I am going to go to Arnie. <laughs> I'm going to give it one for um, for atmosphere and one half thumb because the way they were hitting those, those, those things, that those was driving me crazy. Those extras were like, yes. They didn't pay them enough. Or, yeah, or, <laughs> or not hitting those things. Yeah. Yeah. Or, we're just know. sort of tick, tick. Oh. Um, uh, the, yeah, I thought the trailer was really well done, so a uh, solid thumb up for that. And then the fact that Hopper is just alive is another <laughs> yeah. period. Yeah. End of story. All right. Karakamo? I will have to say a thumbs up because, it, again, it's that creepy vibe. I like the creepy vibe. Mm -hmm. Always will get me. And another th thumbs up because now I really want to go back and see what happens. All right. <laughs> Anyways, we're running a bit late right now. we got to get going. When we come back, we will be talking with our special guest, Kara Kamo. She talked about her new movie, her new book. New oh, book. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> her new book. Oops. Someday. All right. <laughs> Anyways, early night live show. We'll be right back. <laughs> back and she's back it's the lady with blue hair to talk about another book not a movie not yet it's the early late night live show on every wednesday night from seven to eight with our old friend of the show Kara come on welcome back to the show thank you for having me yeah so excited yeah so i'm, I'm very excited about this uh, new book of yours and we have a lot of authors on the show and a lot of times i don't read a lot of books i picked up this book though and i said i want a copy of this yeah. and it was the cover sells the book is what i hear yes. a lot of times the cover on this book is fantastic Yes. So, um, I was told to remember to ask you about who designed it, so I'm going to do that now before Perfect. I forget. <laughs> okay. Well, the person who designed the cover and also the back cover was Matt Crafton, and he is a designer for Space Viking Productions, if I got that right. And he's an artist that I met at a local Comic-Con, actually. It was, like, last summer, and I saw his work, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, let's, let's get together and let's do something, and he, he was well in my range, and I'm of affordability, and it was just perfect, and like, I can't go back, I can't, can't go back to what I was doing before, <laughs> I have to just keep using the design, his, his work was great, and he worked right with me, like, he was on um, another platform where I can work with him and see what he was doing as he was designing, this was so much fun, so this is also the back cover, so it's kind of like a, kind of a, a little bit of a reflection of the front, but it's a... Uh, it was really great. I was very excited to finally to meet him, and uh, this was worked well. It's definitely got like a never-ending story type of vibe. Yes. 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 <laughs> it's like my favorite childhood book, actually. Yeah. You mentioned right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm very I'm very excited about that because it's so many book covers look very generic. Right. It looked like we cut and pasted a bunch of stuff together. That look really looked like it was well thought out. Uh, yes. For the that, so. Yeah, it was really it was a tough one because there's a lot of elements to this book actually compared to my last two books that I that I was on here for, and I I didn't I knew what I wanted but I didn't know how to say what I wanted because there was just so much that could have gone into the cover but he, it's like he read my mind Matt right. read my mind he's like yeah I gotcha I know what you want I'm like okay did he read the book first actually he read a little bit of it I gave him a bit of a like a here's the overall idea right but and he just went with it because I kind of gave him an I kind of like a really terrible sketch of what I was thinking. <laughs> I am not a designer by any stretch of the imagination. But I showed him, like, alright, so I'm going to send you a, a just a picture of what I'm thinking, and I'm really hoping you can translate this, because I'm not really good at explaining it. And he's like, oh, 
no, I get it. I get it. We'll, we'll work with this. It was really awesome. It was fantastic. All right, now tell us a bit about the book. About okay. The so this book, um, it's kind of funny that we've been talking uh, with a green eye. We were talking about King Arthur. I couldn't help but laugh about that because that's the basis of this book is King Arthur specifically. So this book is the first book of a trilogy that I'm working on. So it's not all about King Arthur, although King Arthur and the legends of King Arthur are kind of embedded throughout. But this book specifically talks about the main antagonist of the book, which her name is Nimue. She is a fairy queen, an evil fairy queen, who has been searching for the sword Excalibur for over millennium. And in her hands, this weapon could not only destroy worlds, but even time itself. Now, we have two main characters. Their names are... Never-ending story. I sort of nailed it. Right? <laughs> yeah. I said never-ending yeah, story. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Isn't um, never-ending story pretty much about that? <laughs> like, you well, know, never in a dream, the destroying yeah, world, I time, guess. and stuff like that. I guess, yeah, this is right. different. This yes. is, we're going to go a little bit more sci-fi with Not just though. the nothing coming no. and taking everything. Okay, no, you end right. up knowing what's coming, okay. and you're terrified. <laughs> yes, all right, okay, all right. So, this book uh, specifically talks about them, uh, aside from Nimue, they talk about the two main characters, the main heroes, Avelia and Moira, they come from completely different walks of life, but they join forces to stop Nimue's plan. But danger is all around them, time is against them, and there's some, even some traitors in their midst. So there's, this is a very high action packed book, and the coolest part about this entire trilogy as a whole is that it's not focusing on one person's point of view. Each book you're focusing on two people's point of view, hence the Avelia and Moira. Right. So the first, split cover too. Yeah, right, the split. Right, yeah. Well, that's there's more to the split okay, than just right. the cover. Okay, but no, right. you got to read the book for that. Anyway, so with this book, you have the first half is you know one character, the second half is another. But each book has a kind of a theme going in a sense. So the first book is a viewpoint from the humans. The second book is the viewpoint from gods, and the third book is a viewpoint from the villains. There's there's more than I guess you'd say there's more than one villain in this. In fact, this trilogy sets the stage for the main overall villains of the of the entire universe that I'm creating. I created with, with Memories of Cronus Salas, my first book I showed up here yeah. on this show. Um, I'm currently in the process of creating a, a universe in a sense in my, my own way because I just I'm a huge Marvel fan. Right. So I was very inspired by Stanley and what he did and I'm like, you know what? He can create a world, I can create a world too. Or I can create a universe, as it were. So that's what I started doing. But this trilogy sets the stage, and the villains that come after that are described in the book after the trilogy are, they need a huge introduction. But all of my books, even though they're part of the universe, you can still read them individually, with the exception of the trilogy, obviously. Right, yeah. But you can read them individu individually and see what's going on and still kind of get it. But this trilogy will be kind of that Easter egg for people who have been reading Memories of Chromos Silas and Onward. They'll be like, no way they did that. In fact, <laughs> in fact, what ends up happening is, well, kind of, this is definitely not a spoiler, so don't worry. Okay. But everything that goes wrong from Memories of Chromos Silas on is the villain's fault, the main villain of the entire universe. So anything that goes wrong in the trilogy, in Memories of Chromos Silas, it's the main villain's fault. Now, you've written all these books within yes. the same universe, right? How many yes. books have you written, so, so written and published? Let's just so say. written and published, I've only written two, and that's Memories of Chrono Salas and its prequel, A Scientist Remorse. Okay. And I didn't really think about starting a universe until one of my former beta readers said to me, hey, you know what? This is going to be a great series, and actually I wasn't planning to do a series until she suggested that. I'm like, you know what? You're actually right. I can actually do something more with this. So it really inspired so me. Cool. It really inspired me. And I'm like, I'm like, wow. Okay, maybe I could do something with this. Who, who, who knows, right? And so that's kind of where I, that's where that excitement, enthusiasm came from because that beta reader saw potential in that book going farther. And so I was so excited that she was like, hey, this is good. This is good stuff here. Keep going. Yeah, okay, keep going. Yeah, good stuff. Keep going, kid. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> So, all right, now you are, you first pub you published your first book at what age? I was 15. Okay, yes, 15 when you published your first book. Now, um, you published, what, six at this point? This will be my ninth book. Ninth book. <laughs> I keep getting the number off, like, every single time. Um, Kate Epper says, ELNL's rules. Ah, yes, yes, you're not the host yet, but you're going to have a <laughs> <laughs> um, So, 
so what would you say for people who are considering uh, publishing? What is one of the things that you've learned? Because you've been doing this now for a substantial amount of time. Yes. And I'm assuming you've had some su more successes and some failures along the way. I'd say more on the, the, f the, 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 uh, yeah, okay. the, yeah, we'll go with the, lots of success. Okay, all right, yes, yes, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, know, you know yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> one string of success is just yes. like that. <laughs> it's great, guys, no problems at all. I would, yes, <laughs> <laughs> it's whatever you want it to be. <laughs> In your mind, just keep going with that. Honestly, uh, it's going to sound super trite, I guess you'd say, but keep trying, keep fighting for If you really believe your work is worth the world's ears, keep fighting for it. And every author with who has a name of the author to themselves should know that their work is worth it. And that was the thing that I had to convince myself. And I'm still having days where I feel so low and I'm like, I feel it's just down in the dumps. And because this trilogy itself is giving me a lot of sleepless nights because it's not just like a linear timeline. I'm focusing on so many characters, different points of views, and it's it gets to that point where I'm overwhelmed. And every, I think every author, when they get to that point where they say, well, this is what I want to do, this is what I want to keep doing for my life, once you make that conscious decision that you want to fight for your voice to be heard, you find that it becomes harder and harder and harder. Every day that goes by, it gets harder because something just goes wrong keep fighting for it. If you really believe your voice should be heard, then make the world hear. We are nations. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. So we know firsthand that the nations are not always the right. Not always the easiest thing to deal with, but I'm sure they're always working. You guys are really good at this point. Make these hands that you see. I didn't want to open the door. You opened the door, though. You opened the door, though. Okay, so I don't know how much you guys heard, but what I was just talking about was that relationships and your artistic dreams are sort of similar in a sense because it's a relationship about how much you have to struggle to get it done. And the damn microphone cut out. <laughs> so the universe does not want you giving relationships. No, the universe does not want me giving relationship advice. That's probably, I wasn't even giving advice. I was just saying that it takes work. But you opened the door, though. I opened. Like, I opened the door. I opened the door to that, that right now. What I don't. I, I maybe I don't know about relationships. You know, I've been in a relationship for two years now, officially over two years now. Uh, yes, it's a it's a miracle. So that you know, and one thing I have learned is that man, I don't know anything. So that, but when it comes to your art and when it comes to chasing your dream, um, there's this misconception that at some point over the over the road that it's, it's just going to get easier. It doesn't. No. Not even remotely. <laughs> when Arnie directed her first film, she called me up for, for one of the early shoots. She said, I feel like I'm going to, to die. Yep. I feel like I'm going to throw up. Yep. And I said, yes. Every yeah, he film. Was, he was remarkably unsympathetic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Every single film. Well, for the future. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, honestly, it gets to that point, too. And there, and that's why my husband's absolutely awesome with that. And my mom and my, my dad, they're awesome with it because they know that I go through more of those downs than I go through the ups. And when I go through the ups, we literally have a party because it's like we have one more progress, one more road to success, and it's like one more step towards the ultimate goal. But, you know, there are, there will be weeks that I'll go by and I'm just so depressed because, you know, there's just the, all those downs, all those problems that come through with being an artist and struggling. 
and but you know I have my family to support me and you know my husband's always there he knows what to do and most of the time he just makes the coffee and says all right let's talk this out what's the roadblock what's what's go what's going on in the book and why are characters not talking to you <laughs> that's literally what will happen and they're so, not talking they're to me not, right now exactly they're, they're pills aren't they yes they're real pills they, yes exactly exactly you get it <laughs> they haven't been talking to me for two and a half months. Oh, good. Oh, I would lose my mind. I have, yeah. Okay, yeah. No, I've already lost it, according to my coworkers. But we ran out of time, so this is all. <laughs> uh, Kara, I'm sorry, but we actually we are running That's really fine. late on no, the show I'm today because we had so many things, but we're we're struggling on, and we will continue. Produce this damn show if it's the last thing I do, and it just may be. Anyways, when we come back, we'll uh, we're gonna be dropping all the links for uh, Kara's stuff. Look up Kara Promotions. Um, I'm actually really excited to read this uh, read this book. Kara yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so make sure we'll drop uh, links to her um, to her stuff in the uh, below. And this book comes out in what March? It comes out in March. Um, we're hope we're shooting for the beginning of March. Uh, right. The actual date is still to be determined, but planned for March. Okay. Cool. And so, yeah, looking forward, uh, look forward to that. And when we come back, we're going to have news with Mitch Ford here because he decided not to leave. We'll be back. <laughs> no! Again. Uh, what's going on? Well, we're trying to film a promo for an early late night live show, but Facebook Live keeps kicking us off. Technical difficulties. Tell me about it. Oh, oh, okay. All right, here we go. All right. It's the early late night live. Oh, what are you trying to say? Well, you know, the people should watch the show because we have so much fun, talk entertainment news and, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. And, you know, of course, my segment. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. I swear, Facebook hates us. You know, hey, maybe if we do this. Oh. Oh. Whoops. Accidental selfie. Yeah, okay, look, let me. I, I got this. No, 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 you apparently don't. No, I do. You don't actually my, know what you're doing, all right? It's my phone. Yeah, no, just, no listen, like, let me do it, let me do it. You're acting like such a girl. Oh my gosh, you guy. What? What? We're live. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Join us, Wednesday night, 7 p.m., Exeter Channel 98. Uh, and on YouTube, when it works. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll talk entertainment news, and we'll trash some trailers, <laughs> and then, of course, we've got my segment, yeah, so don't miss it. Join us on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. <laughs> It'll be fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Siblings. So a lot of times our guests after their guest segment just will go and they'll be like, well, where do I go from here? I got to take the mic from Kara just went and sat on the couch over there. She's like, I'm not leaving. I'm yeah. in the long haul here. I'm actually enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> I like my life my night, guys. Pull up a chair. <laughs> Pull up a chair. Yes. All right. Uh, welcome back to the Late Night Live Show. Hello, Ray Berger Renee Bergeron. <laughs> you don't pay us, but you could. Hi, Renee. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, right now, before we get uh, before we get going, we'll be back in a second. Uh, we're going to be um, talk about uh, Annie's Angels Memorial Fund. We are proud supporter of Annie's Angels Memorial Fund. Annie's Angels assist families in crisis due to disease, illness, or disability. Since 2007, they have raised more than $2.5 million, connecting neighbor to neighbor, friend to friend, and business to business. You can help out, too. Just visit Annie'sAngels.org. That's Annie'sAngels.org. And they changed the write-up for this this week, which is kind of surprised me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this was a, this is a surprise as I was reading it. <laughs> All right, Mitch Forty, we got news. What have we got? Uh, cool. <laughs> so, uh, uh, box office this week, we've got uh, Sonic the Hedgehog opening yep. with Jim Carrey and uh, some other characters and peoples. Uh, they actually had a uh, uh, 58 million domestically and 70 million worldwide right. on a budget of about 95 million. 95 so, million for that. Well, they had to redo it because the first ten oh, right, did, yeah. everyone hated it. Mm -hmm. So that's where what people are talking about. Like, why is this movie doing so well? Well, A, it's got Jim Carrey in it, who probably is <laughs> 20. The magnificent muscle. Yeah, 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 right, exactly. Yeah. He's probably 30 million of that 95, yeah. by the yeah. way. And uh, um, and then they had that whole controversy with what Sonic the Hedgehog looked like and uh, having to redo it and everything. And let's be honest. We're talking about a Sonic the Hedgehog movie. The trailer looked like exactly what it should be, just a fun Wrong, but it didn't look like we we're gonna delve deep into this character that runs yeah, really fast. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Goofy yeah. interaction between some fictional character and a uh, kind of a strange, weird mystery or whatever Mission Impossible kind of scene. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's actually the second highest-grossing film over Tomb Raider, adjusted for inflation, in two thousand and one. Um, for game. Uh, for game. Right. Yes. Yeah. Game related. Films. Didn't beat Avengers. It's second rated. Um, <laughs> which is not a 
game. No, 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 but, yeah, but it, it was for that that note was for games. It wasn't just the second highest grossing movie. Oh no, no, no. Right. That, yes, yeah. Oh, as opposed to <laughs> right, right, yeah, yes. just movies in general. Right. Yeah. Wait, no, not even close. Because that's kind of clobber both of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think they did. Didn't they do a Facebook movie? Anyway, I don't so <laughs> <laughs> they might have. Um, <laughs> That'll be Google. That's sorry. Go on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, the other uh, bit of news was kind of interesting. To was uh, the Oscars effect on films. So Parasite won Best uh, Motion Picture. Their weekend to weekend before the Oscars and after the Oscars was an increase of 245% in box office sales from one weekend to the next. Yeah, from now, what was it? Uh, um, from 1.6 million in, in a weekend to 5.6 million domestically. Right. Which is still nothing at the movie theater, but that's a big increase, though. Yeah. No matter how you cut it. That's, that's a big for a movie that was yeah, well, none of us knew about it for like four or five weeks. No, right? I don't think any of us knew about it. We're someone <laughs> in the business, and yeah. it's a foreign language that's, switch film, right? Which puts it at a distinct disadvantage yeah. here. And there's right. probably somewhat of an anomaly, and it probably opened up in a bunch more theaters. I didn't look back at the previous weekend to see how many theaters they were in before, as opposed to this week or what that week. But anyways, but yeah, okay. it's, there's an effect, though. Well, and actually, I do want to say uh, on that news bit, uh, right after the show, Giuseppe Mignano, who was uh, on the show last week. And I'm sure he doesn't mind saying this. After, right after the show, literally, he walked right over and said, "Oh, I did see that movie Parasite." I said, "Oh, what do you think?" He goes, "It's terrible." Without <laughs> 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 even hesitate, he goes, "I wanted to shout something during the show. It was an awful movie." <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, I remember. Like, okay. Which would have been hilarious, by the way. <laughs> so. um, hey, Dan, Dan, I don't know if you can play the, the GIF or not, but uh, uh, you put up the, the graphic for uh, for the uh, Baby Yoda. Do you have the graphic for the Baby Yoda, Dan? I do. I did a thing. I don't know. We'll see if we can do it. Right. But, uh, so unless you lived under a rock, right, you know who Baby Yoda is. Yes. Um, well, Walmart released the announcement of a toy, a plush toy, that they're going to put up. <laughs> 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 and uh, the plush toy is not available until April, but you can pre-order it. It's like, uh, I forget what the cost Get was. Get off your phone, Arnie. There was, <laughs> <laughs> this picture of the plush toy somewhere in there. Um, and then, uh, uh, but now there is a new toy been released uh, by Pop, uh, which is a the child bobblehead toy. So it's actually a baby Yoda mm-hmm. with a bobblehead, All right. which is going to be kind of fun. Right. And there he is. He's super cute. There's I thought the they did a really good well, job know, with it. You know what the Pop dolls are, Arnie? Yes. Okay. I yeah. have them, yeah. All right. Actually, I just got two of them from, like, for Christmas. They're oh. diehard characters. I just haven't had a place in them. Yeah. Nice. Them for <laughs> right, yeah. So, yeah, I just didn't know if you knew about because I only recently found out, and they've become a big thing now, apparently. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. huge, yeah. Um, but I, I, what I will say is I am shocked that it's taken Disney this long to come out with a baby Yoda thing. I mean, that's right. their shtick. Like, right. they come out with... Merchandising is sort of their yeah, thing. Yeah, that's what they do. <laughs> Star Wars yeah. is... Merchandise yeah. is the thing. Yeah. So I'm Disney, just surprised you know? that it's taken them how many months before they finally get a toy in the hands of these childlike adults? And they had what? Rose Tico toys, and they did not have... <laughs> 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 really? The other thing I don't understand... Frozen toys are out before the movie even came out. <laughs> the other thing I didn't understand was they never changed Ray's clothing, and I'm like, how are you going to sell another action figure if she doesn't have, have a new set clothes? clothes? <laughs> so I was very confused by that yeah. as well, but th- no one explains Let's it. Let's do the Batman movie thing, so. Bring a bunch of yeah. costumes that were not in the film. So anyway, <laughs> he's available April 6th as well. Right. But uh, for a small six and a half inch version, you get ten bucks, and for the ten inch version, it's the thirty bucks or something like that. Right. Who's buying um, one? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of Star Wars, uh, did you guys hear about the Samuel L. Jackson story with the where he actually talked to George Lucas to find out? I mean, he literally said he says. Uh, you know, uh, who do I have to talk to? Who do I have to see about the color of my lightsaber? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've actually so, seen that clip That's a, yeah, where he was talking about they want a yeah. purple lightsaber. Yes. Um, uh, there was a, uh, apparently he was, uh, um, he did an interview back in the day s- or about that particular story at one point in time, and he said something along the lines of, like, I was the second best badass Jedi out there, so I needed to, you know, next to Yoda, so I have to have another color lightsaber. So I don't know if he had made another case with, you know, George at one point in time, but eventually he caved in and gave him a purple lightsaber. Yeah. But, I, uh, the first I heard was, I want to see myself in the big screen. Like, <laughs> see where I am. <laughs> big fight. That's right. I'm sure I'm so you can scene. pick it out. Like, there's a big shot. I think it's the second movie 
with their having like there was all these lightsabers moving around, and you could see his very clearly. And I will say this um, on the Samuel Jackson thing. Um, that movie, that series, uh, the prequel series, proves how good an actor Samuel Jackson is because, I mean, he's the guy who runs around shouting "you mother" all the time, <laughs> and, but he fit so perfectly into Star Wars. To me, it just showed how good an actor. This he was really, really good is in that a series. really good actor because not for one second you're feeling like he was putting this on. Yeah. But I saw a great interview where he was talking about people were complaining about the green screen thing. He goes, he said, "Did it bother you to act in front of the green screen all the time?" He goes, "No, I'm an actor. I just used." My imagination. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I thought, yes. <laughs> that was really... Well, like the story we saw John Gill did in, was it Dustin Hoffman? Yes. Mm -hmm. And Dustin Hoffman had to, they were doing a scene where the character that Dustin Hoffman was playing was, had been without sleep for three days. So he shows up on the set and he looks terrible. So John Gill did exactly the scene with him. He goes, is it going to be okay? And, he's, and he says, yeah, I haven't slept in three days. I was trying to get my character. And he said, and so John Gill did was supposedly to have said, my dear boy, <laughs> you know, like, respect me. <laughs> For all you method really actors the out there, all I gotta say is look up Tom Hardy's back pain and then think about it for a second. Okay. <laughs> well, Samuel L. Jackson apparently has to have something purple in every of his scenes, so I don't know. Uh, uh, he's got a thing for purple, apparently. Really? Yeah, so he has something put in his character or involved with his, uh, his, his performance where that's purple. Hmm. So now I want to go back and watch some Samuel L. Jackson movies to see if I can find it. Yeah. Okay, well, anyways, uh, is that all you got for the news, or? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. You're just sitting back. Like, yeah, pretty much. What do you expect from me? Yeah. Mitch Fortier. <laughs> <laughs> My time is up. Uh, yeah, well, it's, we like have I been so screwed up. We, yeah, yeah, we were, we've were been so screwed up at the time, because we got going about five minutes late. And I'm wondering, why are we getting going five minutes late? Because the tech guy listened to what I said. Better to go late with the sound working than to not. So he did as I told him, so good job, Dan. <laughs> all right, but... Uh, we are going to come up with a really cool logo for this, but it's another thing I haven't pressured Dan enough to do, <laughs> because I don't know how to do it, because I'm not that smart. Um, but it's our new segment of the show, which we're trying to feeling out. And I say this is Arnie's idea, because she got mad one day. <laughs> and so she said, can I add this segment to the show? And I said, go for it. And it's called the What's Your Beef segment. Um, so if you can't figure out what your beef segment is, I mean, I think it's about as obvious as the trailer trash thing. Um, but apparently our guest is also mad about the situation, too. She said, so can I sit in and also be mad? I'm like, well, this is just a really angry show. <laughs> this is just, there's a whole lot of anger going on here. I don't know what I'm doing as a host, but either it's going really well or... Anyway, so, <laughs> so Arnie, what's your beef? Okay, so um, I am a Josh Groban fan. So, uh, you know, I've listened to all his albums. Now I know my beef is. Yeah. <laughs> I've even watched that show that he did on Netflix, uh, The Good Cop. Okay. And it was, I, I enjoyed it very much. It's not a particularly good show, but I really I don't like really it. care. Who not? Okay. Yes. <laughs> so he just released a new song. Now, I'm sure you're familiar with his work. It's kind of... The only one I know is a Pirates of the Caribbean song. He did a Pirates of the Caribbean song? This is the tale of Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> no one knows that? I don't know that song. No? The, yeah. the joke I missed song that. Do you know that video. Christmas song, If You Just Believe? Yes. Okay. That's that's his typical style. So like okay. very big and very like. Now, I know his basic style. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So um so when I found out he was coming out with a new song, I'm like, oh great! Like I, I've been looking for something that song really dig my teeth, you know, sink my teeth into and listen to and make up all these romantic situations out of. So, so between that and the gulag, you're good. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm, I'm very easily. <laughs> <laughs> and the Kremlin. <laughs> you sprinkle some Kremlin in there. <laughs> Wait to hear my review of Birds of Prey. Anyway, All right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway um, so the new album, the new song just debuted. It's called uh, "Empty Sky," mm -hmm. and it's seven and a half minutes long. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's uh, got a nice little logo of like a piano and him and a blue sky. And I'm like, oh yeah, it's really pretty. Actually. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I, I started listening to it, expecting, like I said, to be immersed in this old-fashioned feel. And what I got was, like, a techno beat. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> 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 oh, almost exactly that. <laughs> yeah. So Pretty close. It's, it's not a horrible song, no. as the songs go. It's way too long. And I'm listening to it going, this is not what I listened to Josh Groban for. <laughs> I don't want to groove on the dance floor <laughs> for Josh Groban. I'm going to give a really old song reference. 
So you went to the garden party, aren't yes. you? Yes. <laughs> Reminisce with your old friends. <laughs> no one knew my name. No one knew your name. <laughs> so I love Trash Corbin, but please stop doing this. <laughs> stop trying to rediscover please yourself. Stop, <laughs> stop trying to rediscover yourself. You should not have it. Stop trying to That's expand as an it. artist. Fit into the little box that we gave you and be happy. There's a whole bunch of Disney covers that you have not done yet. <laughs>
that was the whole plot. So he's trying Anyways, to kill the guy. Anyways, it's that our favorite scene in Birds of Prey was she's cutting her hair, and it's like it's at the beginning, and you think this is big catharsis thing, and right. so she's got her hair up in the two pigtails, and like she's cutting the color off. So she cuts it off. She looks at herself in the mirror, and then she grabs her hair and just starts sobbing because she, her hair is gone. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yes, that's me on a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, what 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 was she in Harley, Harley Quinn in prior to? Because she's only Suicide Squad. Suicide yeah. Squad, right? And then they just kind of created their own her own story. Yeah, and it was just a, it was a blast. Uh, it was a cool. blast. Though. So maybe the early late night live show can bring back this Phoenix from the ashes. So <laughs> you know, who knows? You know? <laughs> I can't wait to see it now. Yeah. As, and now that I got a good review from you, I was curious about it because Harley Quinn's like one of my favorite like people from the DC universe. I have a few people I like and few, lots of people I definitely don't like. I rant about it enough to my husband. He's, he hears all my rants. <laughs> but like Harley Quinn and the Joker, they're like my favorite like of the heroes and villains are my favorite. And so when I saw Harley Quinn come out and I saw the Birds of Prey, I'm like, oh, this is going to be good. And then I'm seeing all the reviews. I'm like, why is everybody mixed on this? And I mean, when you said, you know, it's a little bit, of a, it's more of a comedy than a series. I'm like, I can, I get that. That makes sense. Now that I'm seeing, like, comparing what you're saying to the to the commercial, like, oh, huh, okay. So, so that's what it's that's what gives more of an idea. So, but I'm looking forward to seeing that. Right, for two quick facts. Yes. So Harley Quinn uh, was an addition to the title. It used to be just Birds of Prey. Mm-hmm. And then nobody really knew what was going on, so they added that Harley, Harley Quinn to make sure. sure. Before it aired. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and, uh... It's always uh, the fantabulous emancipation of Harley uh, Quinn, because I remember that from yeah, the Yeah, but no, they said it was one. Birds of Prey. <coughs> that was the name. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and Harley Quinn was yeah. one of the most worn costumes last year and for Halloween, so she was oh, wow. definitely in the top ten. There was one of the notes, she, she only came to she only came to existence by the Batman TV show. That's oh. where we got to start. Ooh. And, oh, yeah. another fun fact. Yeah. All right, uh, anyways, um, Arnie, real quick, what's your rating for Harley Quinn now that you've seen it? Oh, um, two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Two All thumbs right. up. It was just so much fun. All right, well, thank you, Kara Kamau, for coming on the Absolutely. show today. We'll be dropping Absolutely. links for her stuff. Um, make sure you uh, check it out. Uh, thank you, uh, KJ, for being here. Mitch Fortier. Uh, thanks for letting me uh, do the whole opening thing yeah, and yeah. screwing up and having fun. Well, yeah. So much for being a pro, right? Now you know what it's like to be me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks, yeah, folks. Not as easy as it looks. Yeah, this type of screw up takes work. <laughs> All right, and thank you to the crew who worked really hard to get the show up and crying. We've had a lot of technical issues, and thank you, Ethan Aho, who came in to direct, and Dan Graham. You guys always do a really great job. So And Ryan Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. Well, he didn't do the technical Ryan. stuff, but he's doing a good job out back. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways, we'll be back next week. Who's our guest for next week? Um, Aaron Reese, the Moose with the Uke. Oh, that's uh, right. Aaron Moose with the Uke is going to be back. Bring your kids. This is a good time. Yes. All right. Let's see if Kate steals my seat again next week. All right. We'll be back. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching the early late night live show. We are on every Wednesday night live at Exeter Studios in Exeter, New Hampshire, 7 p.m. every Wednesday night. Please make sure to join us next week for more entertainment, uh, comedy, and information that is probably not that important or timely. But no sports and no politics, so there's that. To find out more about my film company, uh, make sure to check out narrowstreetfilms.com. To find out more about Killarney's writing, make sure you check out killarneytrainer.com. To find out more about Mitch and his acting, I'm sure he's got a website. I keep forgetting the name of it. I'll write it down here. To find out more about the wonderful studio that we produce at Exeter uh, Studio, go to exeternh.tv. They're a great studio and they're doing a lot of cool things. Uh, But please make sure to like us on Facebook and please, please, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit the notification bell and the like and make sure that you share with your friends and enemies alike because we don't judge that much. See you next week.